Next, two astronauts who should have been back on Earth weeks ago said this Wednesday that they're confident that Boeing's space capsule can return them safely in spite of breakdowns. NASA test pilots Bush Wilmore and Sonny Williams launched aboard Boeing's new Starliner capsule early last month. They were the first people uh, to ride it. They should have been back by now. But they are still, as you can see, in a state of weightlessness in orbit. Here at France 24, Caitlin Kelly with this. A mission only scheduled for eight days now rolls into its fifth week. As the Boeing Starliner's return journey has been repeatedly postponed due to leaks and thruster failures. Astronauts Barry Wilmore and Sunita Williams are confident they can return home after testing. In the meantime, their spirits are high aboard the International Space Station. We've been thoroughly busy up here, integrated right into the crew, and uh, every, every about once a week we get to jump into Starliner and talk to our control team there. The system that enables the capsule to back away from the space station into the Earth's atmosphere is faulty. Boeing have branded this moment as advantageous, a chance to do further checks while the craft is still in orbit. This is, this is the, the world of test. This is a tough business that we're in. Human spaceflight is not easy in any regime. And there have been multiple issues with every spacecraft that's ever been designed. And that's the nature of what we do. You know, that mantra you've heard, failure is not an option. That's why we are staying here now. Uh, we, we did have some degradation in and, uh, and our thrusters, and we know that. And that's why we're staying, because we're going to test it. That's what we do. A year behind schedule and $1.5 billion over budget, this NASA Boeing mission had experienced technical issues before it left Earth. After multiple incidents and two high-profile crashes in recent years, Starliner, Boeing's first manned expedition, was pegged as a reputation rebuilder. With no timeline for return, the astronauts might have to jump aboard SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft to get home. Thanks to Caitlin Kelly for that report. Let's get some broader analysis. David Mamoun brings us uh, his from uh, Toulouse. Joining us now, Professor Mamoun, thanks for being with us. Um, Thank you. Clarify for me, because uh, from a layman's perspective, I feel like I'm having the wool pull over my eyes. As the French would put it, I've been sort of rolled in the flower kind of thing. What would you say to that? No, I actually, uh, we've got good reasons to believe what the astronaut said, what uh, um, Butch, Willi Butch Wilmore said, because actually this is a, this is a flight uh, which is designed to test uh, the, um, the, the readiness of the, of the overall systems. And so it's not absolutely unusual to get some, uh, some problems. Uh, typically, when you compare to other system tests like uh, SpaceX, you've got also failures. Uh, and uh, what happens at this time is that they, they just scenarize the failures and tell you, wow, look, uh, it, uh, it blows up. And, uh, and now they're, they're just staying plain and brain. Uh, okay, we've got a problem, we're going to investigate. So basically what you're seeing here is a uh, different ways of uh, coping with the difficulty of, uh, of flight systems. Uh, Elon Musk, well known as a self-promotionalist, and of course SpaceX, according to him, is absolutely fantastic, no problems whatsoever, but it appears to be working. Is the big issue uh, with this, and I'm satisfied by your, by your explanation, I should put away my natural scepticism, but when you look at Boeing's record down to earth with the issues with various aircraft, understandably people might have doubts. Absolutely, absolutely. I think uh, th there are two, uh, two underlying things uh, behind that. First, as I said, it's not unusual to get uh, some issues, and here there are two types of issues. There is a pressurization of tanks with helium. Helium is a very uh, um, uh, is a very light gas, and so it's uh, when it's very easy to get a leak to get the pressurization. One uh, the, the the more um, problematic issue here is that you may they, they've got experience. Uh, problems with the thrusters and uh, the thrusters did not work uh, correctly and so they had to uh, they had to dock with uh, by hand and so that they, they were able to do that very uh, very uh, efficiently but on the other hand and i think you're right there is an overall doubt on the old space and the boeing uh, ways of doing things because actually some people say and uh, that uh, boeing has been more focused on making profits rather than pure engineering. And here at Superhero, of course, we are uh, 
uh, we're raising engineers and we're tr training them to be the, the, the best efficient. And of course, from an engineering point of view, we want to, the engineers to be in charge and not the, the financial ways of seeing things. And that's probably one of the underlying issues behind this skepticism about the, the, the problems of, uh, of, uh, um, of the system. Anything? But the Starliner uh, will be uh, actually... Their explanation is uh, is uh, absolutely uh, correct. They will uh, when the when the Starliner will go back on Earth, uh, they will uh, destroy actually the module uh, with the thrusters, and so they want to get some more data uh, while they are still uh, in orbit in order to get uh, to get some corrections uh, for the next flight that will uh, happen, as they say, probably one year from now. And you, you, mentioned, Jay, you, you mentioned you mentioned docking by hand. That sounds incredibly primitive. It's not as as silly as I'm imagining it. Is it docking by hand? <laughs> yeah, kind of. Kind really? Of. There, are, there are backups and backups and backups. The, actually, there are systems that, uh, that automated systems that can help uh, docking, uh, that can make the docking, which is very, very uh, precise. I mean, it's a, it's a fraction of a centimeter. And uh, what they said uh, is that they, they finally, with the help of their systems, they were, they were in control of the systems in order to get uh, the docking. But the docking was incredibly uh, uh, precise and efficient. But that's a problem. When you've got too much failure, you, you need to be able to count on uh, the, the, an experienced uh, crew. And that's what happened, actually. David Moon of Space Systems Toulouse, thank you, sir, for joining us and giving us that very detailed and clear explanation about what is happening all those miles above us in the atmosphere. Thank you very much indeed for yeah. watching for all developments as they come back down to Earth.